Hey, 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 welcome to another edition of Talk Business with Audrey. I'm your host, Audrey Bell Kearney, and today my guest is Miss Dominique Hagler. She is someone who is very near and dear to my heart, and we're going to be talking about her career as an actress in, uh, in this industry, upcoming actress in this industry. She's also starring in our upcoming show, Campus Crimes, so make sure to check it out. That's Campus, C-A-M-P-U-S, Crimes, C-R-I-M-E-S dot TV. So she's going to be talking about, you know, how to land a good audition and how to get roles in, in movies and shorts. And I'm happy to have her as my guest today. But before I go on to that, I also want to give a shout out to a young lady who's doing some amazing things. She's a writer. She's a producer. And her name is the artist, um, the artist Ms. Muffin. That's M-F-M-Z. M-U-F-F-I-N, the artist Ms. Muffin. And she has a new short coming out called The Net Sum of Life. Check it out. It's a short thriller. Um, check her out at Facebook. That's Facebook.com. The artist Ms. M-F-M-Z. I don't know why I want to say M-F. M-Z, M-U-F-F-I-N. Facebook.com, the artist, backslash the artist Ms. M-Z, M-U-F-F-I-N. Check her out. She's doing some great things in this industry as well. Now on to the show. Hey, 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 welcome to Talk Business with Audrey. I'm your host, Audrey Bell Kearney. Today I'm interviewing someone who's very dear and near to my heart. Um, she's an upcoming actress. She's very beautiful. She loves what she's doing. And she's here to talk about her new movie that's going to be premiering this Wednesday, March the 2nd at the Plaza Theater in Atlanta, Georgia. I would like to welcome Dominique Hagler to the show. Hi, everyone. How are you? So, Dominique, we are um, excited about your new film and... Um, Tell us a little bit about your background, where you grew up and how you got into the business of acting. And, you know, we want to know more about what you're doing and about the movie that's coming out this, this uh, week. Um, so basically, just a little background on me. Um, I am originally from New Jersey. Yes, the Garden State. Um, I moved to Georgia almost about three years now. Um, and pretty much I've been acting, you know, since I was about three. Um the key to it all was uh, at three, I told my grandmother, I said, I went in my room, I put on my little blue dress with the sparkles on it. And I was like, Nana, zip me up. I'm going to be a star. And from that point on, I knew that that was, that was my purpose. That was, you know, my passion and everything. So I pretty much went from there. Um, as far as Simpson Road, to give you a background on um, who I play, um, my name is Nisi, and I play uh, b -Lo's girlfriend. Um you know, I went off to school and I, I tried to do all the right things. But however, I loved him, you know, that much that I came back to kind of ride with him through whatever it is that he was going through. Um, So in the midst of me, you know, trying to be a good girl, but, you know, still trying to hold my man down and let him know that I love him. That's what I was doing. So protecting him by all means, showing my loyalty that that's who I was. So now, so now you, you're starting in this great movie, Simpson Road. And, and from my understanding, Simpson Road is actually the road that T.I. grew up on in Bankhead, Atlanta, in the Bankhead uh, division of um, area of Atlanta. So how was that being able to go to where, you know, someone as famous as T.I. is and shoot that film, not really based on his life, but kind of based on his block or his, or his, or his territory? How was that whole um, the adventure of shooting the film there? Oh, gosh. Um, honestly, I can say it definitely put me back. I felt like I was home, um, you know, because being from New Jersey, you know, not saying that I had a bad life or anything like that, but just being around those kind of people, it was like more of a community than anything. And, you know, yeah, people say it's rough or whatever the case, but I, I did feel, you know, welcome before anything. And I, I had the pleasure of meeting, you know, the community and some of the people that lived around there. And it was really, really great. And I, you know, I did feel like a part of their family and a part of their community. So it was really fun for me. So now I know that you last summer, you uh, premiered in a film called um, Muse. Tell us about that film. Muse. <laughs> Muse was fun. Muse was fun. Um, you know, every part that I get, I'm pretty much myself. So it's always easy to kind of transition from character to character and kind of use my everyday who I am and being those people. So Muse, I was basically your best friend that is not afraid to say anything. She's laying it all out for you. What you won't say, she will say. 
Um, and that's pretty much who who I played, and her name was Shawnee. And um, Shawnee was pretty much the mouth of the group. You know, she was going to say, and whatever she say goes, and that's just how it was. She's your favorite best friend. So now, how did you manage to get that role? You know, how did you manage to get that role um, as Shawnee? And how did you manage to get the role, the role of the Simpson Road? Um, well, Shawnee, I actually saw it on Instagram. Um, Nakia Stevens, who actually uh, wrote and produced the movie, um, she had a posting, and I went and I auditioned. And I actually did um, a monologue from Waiting for Excel, um, and that went great. So I blew that out of the water and I was pretty much Shawnee. I took that and ran with it. Um, I was very proud of myself about that. Um, as far as Nisi, um, Nisi, that was kind of funny. Actually, at that premiere, um, the writer and the producer and the director were actually at that screening and they saw me and they were like, hey, I want her. Let's bring her in. And from there, I kind of went in and I auditioned and everything like that. And it was like, yeah, we want you. So you know, it's just about who you know at the end of the day. Not, you know, what you know is good too, but at the end of the day, it's who you know and who you never know who's out there watching. So, you know, you always got to put your best foot, best foot forward. That is true. You never know who's watching. And that's 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 the absolute truth. I remember um, when I met the, the uh, producers for Simpson Road, they told me, say, we were in the audience and watching the, the screening for the muse and we saw her. And, and and the writer who had actually written Simpson Road, his name is Tony, he said, we saw her and that's when I decided to go ahead and make the film because at that point, the film had been written, but I hadn't did anything with it. And when we saw her, we decided, you know what, let me go ahead and get this film done. His brother was one of the editors on Muse and he realized my brother can do this. So now they, they're getting together to do Simpson Road. So that's exciting. So now you said you found the part for Muse on Instagram. How did that all work out? Like, does does a uh, is there like casting calls on Instagram? How did that work? Well, I actually found um I actually found that posting through uh model call. Um, mm -hmm. it's at model call on Instagram. So if you go, they usually post model things. Uh, you know, model casting. However, they do post other things. You know, hair, movies, things like that. So you kind of gotta be on the lookout for it. Um, and that's pretty much what happened. And I just so happily ran across it and you know they said this is the time and what we're looking for and I pretty much went from there I contacted Nakia and you know I got in and did what I had to do so basically that's how that happened so now a lot of the times um how many movies have you been in so if we got a question let's just pop the question up here real quick okay how many movies have you been in um I've been in Two movies as of today. Um, I am working on about three more, give or take. Um, so that's exciting. Um, it's just the beginning. So, so yeah, now, so I'm excited. Well, I mean, and it's a cool beginning. So now you're in the metro in Atlanta area where there's so much going on. You've been in Betsy. You've been in Vampire Diaries. Tell us a little bit about what you did in those movies and, and what did that do for you as an actress being around so many talented and amazing people? I know you had the chance to be around Monique and talk to her a little bit and Queen Latifah. Tell me what that whole thing was like. Um, honestly, that was that was definitely, definitely, definitely a big, big experience for me. Um, doing Betsy, I can definitely say, you know, meeting new people and actually talking to these people and actually, you know, them feeling reachable to me. You know, they're not so far away. You know, Monique actually sat down in the audience with us and laughed, you know, and talked to us. And that was really like, OK, well, I can get here, too. So for me, it was like I am able to do these things. You know, no, I don't you know, I don't have to be where you guys are, but I'm able. So if I need to talk to you, I can. And you're down to earth. So I felt comfortable. I'm like, you know, everybody's not so all up in the air about everything. Um, so that was fun. As far as Vampire Diaries, um, it was pretty much the same thing. Having the ability to talk to these people and, you know, getting their real personalities outside of who they play. Because, you know, you see people on TV and it's like, yeah, I don't like you because of this. I don't like you because of that. But they were, you know, they're completely different from the people that they actually play. So, I mean, it, it was great. It was great. The experience was definitely great. 
So now I see that you do some writing yourself, um, and I know you are an aspiring producer and a filmmaker. Tell me a little bit about what you see yourself doing in the near future with your own projects. Um, with my own projects, definitely getting those out. You know, I'm looking to finish writing, and I should be casting within the next couple of months um, and shooting soon after that. But, you know, just putting my thoughts all out because I have a lot. So I hardly sleep because I'm thinking all the time and it's a constant ongoing thing, but I love it. You know, I wouldn't trade my brain in for a second of the day. So um, as far as my projects and producing and things like that, I really look forward to it. I look forward to working with all the great people that I've been working with, meeting with new people in the future on this. So um, I'm really excited. Um, I'm really excited about the upcoming things that I do have. Now, you say you're going to be casting for your new film. I know you had the opportunity to spend some time with um, Winston Sinclair, uh, who was a casting agent for some of the really big movies. Tell us what that experience was like. Um, that was that was different. That was definitely different. Um, it was great. Don't get me wrong. Every experience, I, I do learn something from it. Um, at that time, I was actually interning where we were actually casting for um, Barbershop 3. And that was pretty much learning the background, you know, what, what the directors are looking for when it comes to actually, you know, picking these people for these roles, whether it's, you know, the appearance, whether it's the way they talk, their demeanor, whatever it is, you know, you know what to look for. And on the flip side of looking for, it's like, you know how to go in. I know for a fact, if I'm going for a role for, you know, a sophisticated woman, I need to be ready. I need to have on a, a blazer. I need to have on dress pants and heels. My hair needs to be pulled back. I need to be able to talk and things like that. You know, if I'm going in there for whatever it is, I need to be prepared from head to toe because that's what they're looking for. So speaking of preparing, once you get, once you see a casting call, um, you set yourself up to be that character. So when you go into the casting call, are you going in as that character? Or are you going in as just, you know, this is who I am and I'm going to mold myself into the character? Or do you go dressed as that, as that character? Um, well, it's different for every every um, movie or whatever I'm going for because sometimes they don't give you background on that person. So you kind of got to go in there like, hey, this is what I think. I'm going to use my best judgment and go with it from there. For me, I go in as myself all the time. And any movie that you ever see me in or a small project or whatever the case, anybody can tell you that's Dominique. That's Dominique on the regular day. So there's really, it's, it's not too far from who I actually am. And so it works. And you know, even if it's a little bit different, I'm always going to put my twist on it. So as far as preparation, yeah, I'm going in there with the clothes on. Like I said, if I'm if I'm going for a teacher or whatever the case, you know, that's how I'm going in there. If I'm going in there for, you know, a ghetto girl, I got my hoop earrings on. You know, if I'm going in there like a nurse, I got some scrubs on. So I'm going in there as the part. But I'm also going in as myself because that makes it more realistic and more believable. If I go in there and read from the script and how it is or whatever, it's not mine. I don't own it. So my thing is when I go in there, I have to own it 100 percent. Then it's mine. And I'm OK with that. And even if I don't get it, because I'm not going to get everything. And that's OK. You know, I've, I've grown that tough skin. So I'm all right. So I put my best foot forward, whatever the case may be. So now you're pretty young and, and you mentioned tough skin. This is a really, this industry is one of those industries that if you're not careful, it'll chew you up and spit you out. How have you prepared yourself knowing that this is the type of industry that you're in? How have you prepared yourself for that type of thing? Because you know, the, the media and the public and people, they're really critical and, and, and some of them are pretty awful. You know, how do you prepare yourself to be in that position? I remember, um, uh, uh, Phoenix River, I think that was his name. He was like 21 years old. Like they, you can become really, really hugely successful and some people can't really handle the success. And then you have people that want to be in your space and they want to talk about you. They want to dog you out. You know, how do you, how do you think you're going to handle that? Because you are, you are going into that space. What is your, your, your thing, your way of handling that stuff? Well, for me, handling that kind of stuff, at the end of the day, somebody's going to talk about you. Whether you're doing good or you're doing bad, you're doing okay, they're going to talk. So for me, especially being a cancer and being very sensitive, I do take things kind of personal sometimes, but I've learned to separate that. Um, it's like, hey, that's fine. You can talk about me. 
You know, it's okay. You can talk about me. But at the end of the day, I know it's true. Um, and I think that's why I kind of look at Beyonce and I do applaud her because, I mean, they have been slamming her since um, since she did the Super Bowl. And I'm like, at the end of the day, you have to have that tough skin. It doesn't matter what people say about you because they're going to talk about you. At the end of the day, do what you love and get those coins. That's just how you got to look at it. Get the coins, get the coins. I hear you. I hear you. So now I know you got a new exciting role coming up as a police officer. Don't tell us the whole just as a movie, just give us a little bit about what that film is about, you know, and what's your take on it? What do you feel about playing? You went from playing, hey, the girl next door, fun girl, to playing, hey, ride or die chick, now you're playing a cop. How? Tell me about that and how you see yourself moving through that movie. Once again, um, once again, I after reading the script, I'm like, yeah, that's me. It's being able to wear those different hats. And I guess that's the fun part because even though I am these people, I, I am still able to be who I am. So her attitude, her demeanor from what I can read, she is everything that I am. So me being able to just put myself in there and just become her is awesome. Um, so yeah, I'm a police officer. You know, that's definitely different from being a ride or die chicken, what everybody will see in Simpson Row. Oh yes, this is what I'm trying to, I'm going against. So it's fun. You know, it's fun being able to see all the different people I can be. And it, I mean, it sounds crazy, but for me, it's fun. You know, I enjoy being able to be like, hey, you know, today I'm a nurse. Tomorrow, you know, I'm playing some Spanish lady. Whatever the case, it, it excites me. So um, that one is definitely, you know, dealing with the narcs and things like that. So it, it's kind of deep. Um, once I get there, we can definitely talk about that. But yes, be on the look for on the run um it should be you know we should be coming out really soon with that one so just you know be excited about that as much as i am because i'm excited so it's, it's kind of cool because you you are you're producing films this is your on the run is going to be with the third producer you started out with one producer another producer that was at the premiere saw you now you have another producer who's so how is it working with the different producers and directors because i know everybody have their own personality and creative people are really creative but sometimes they can be a little unmanageable and um what's the other word i'm thinking a little bit unruly sometimes <laughs> how do you go from personality to personality when you're working with different producers different directors how do you handle that and how and how have your experience been working with all these different producers and and, and directors well how i handle them it's pretty much, I'm coachable. And I, I can pretty much tell anybody that I am coachable. So at the end of the day, I'm taking things from all of them and I'm using what they're telling me or, you know, gaining that knowledge. I'm not opposed to anybody's views on anything. You know, we work together constructively, so it works for us. Even though the personalities and creativity, you know, the creative mind can kind of throw you sometimes, just being able to say, hey, you know, I don't really like how that line sounds. Can I say this? And, you know, most of the time they'll be like, yeah, you know, do what you got to do to make it yours once again. So for me, I'm just, you know, I listen and I take everything in and then I kind of we all always sit down and talk about things. So I've I've never had any issues. You know, yeah, of course, we bump heads because everybody's different. But for the most part, we've been OK. Um, experience wise, of course, everybody works differently. Um, but like I said, I've learned a lot from all of them. You know, whether it's how things are behind the scenes or, you know, how to write certain things or how things are supposed to be laid out or casting or whatever. I've learned these things. So, you know, I'm always like I said, I'm coachable. So I'm able to deal with all these different people and their opinions and their ideas and things like that. So, you know, I am I'm still mold. You can still mold me and I'm OK with that. Now, I know that um, you have a lot going on. You work with some amazing producers and filmmakers and, you know, just, just a whole gamut of people. Um, what do you see yourself in the next five years in this industry? This is a pretty big industry with a lot going on and a lot more content is needed because we're, we're growing. Like we have all these different platforms, such as the one that you're on right now. We have smart televisions. We have all these different people who can put you on TVs around the world. What do you see yourself in the next five years in this in this entertainment industry as an actress and a producer? Um, you know, honestly, I guess I love acting, you know, and I'm going to keep on pushing for that. But 
if that's not necessarily where it's supposed to be for me, then writing, being behind the scenes will definitely be it. And I'll, you know, I plan on opening my own um, acting school and just getting them in there and getting them trained and all that kind of stuff. So that's my near, that that's my five year goal, you know, just to say I, I've had the experience and yeah, I may not be in every movie or be on every commercial or TV show or whatever the case, but I've had that enough experience where I'm able to teach people and put them where they want to be. So that's pretty much where I see myself in five years, you know, writing if I'm not on a big screen. So, yeah. So now have you ever received a role? I know you're pretty much a babe in the industry, but have you ever received a role that you was like, yeah, I'm absolutely not going to do that role? Um, I have been offered to be, um, to be, um, a street walker or a prostitute. Uh, not saying that I was against it because I wasn't, um, but at the same time, you know, just the whole nude thing is not for me. So if somebody's trying to cast me to be nude, I'm not doing it. Um, especially not at this, at this stage. I mean, I, I just, I refuse, um, because that's not me. And I don't feel like I have to take my clothes off in order to get a part. I look at Taraji. We've never seen Taraji naked on TV. We've never seen it in any movie. You know, baby boy, that was as far as it went, but you don't see nothing. And I'm like, at the end of the day, she's still making big money. So that's why I need to be. I don't feel like I have to expose myself or drop down to that level just to get a part or, you know, just to get a check. Because at the end of the day, for me, it's self-respect. So, yeah. So you turn down news side. So now you got other people, young girls out here, young women, grown women for that matter, who are looking to get into this industry and become actors or actresses. What do you say to them? How do they, what do they do, need to do to start? To start, um, I would definitely say go for everything. Go for everything. Get the no's. Get the yeses, but definitely get the no's because the no's are going to help you build that tough skin. And from that point, you can see whether this is for you or this is not for you. So I would definitely say that'll be it. Um, acting school, definitely. Um, you know, reading up on what it takes and things like that. But I would definitely say first and foremost, go for everything. Get all the no's you can possibly get because that is going to help you grow. So now, have you ever done something that you thought was audition for anything that you thought was just horrendous and horrible? And you're like, okay, I'm wasting my time. Like, have you ever gone for a role and you said, oh my God, what am I doing here? I don't fit here. It's awful. Yes. Yes, I have. Um, and I, I won't say, um, I won't say, you know, who it was for, but when I went, you know, I definitely thought, okay, well, maybe this could be a good opportunity. Once I got there, I was like, this is not a good fit for me. You know, I don't feel comfortable. And it wasn't that it was like a, you know, a bad kind of thing. It was more so I wasn't what they were looking for. And I knew that as soon as I walked in the door and I just kind of saw, you know, read the script. And even after that, you know, like I said, I always put my, my best foot forward. So at the end of the day, I still went there and I auditioned and I did what I had to do. Granted, I didn't get the part and I was okay with that because, I had I already knew that that wasn't gonna be for me. I, I wasn't gonna have that because that was I, that wasn't the perfect fit, and I was I was content with that, you know. So even with that no, and granted, yeah, everybody wants it to be a yes. I was like, you know, later on down the line, I probably would have felt like an outcast for the rest of the cast. So I mean, every, what's for you will be for you without you forcing it. At the end of the day, so I'm I was okay with that, and um. I mean, yeah, you know, they were great people. Don't get me wrong. I love them. Um, but that that wasn't for me. And and like I said, I was all right with that. Okay, so now you got Simpson Road coming up. Tell us what people can check out Simpson Road. I know it's premiering this Wednesday, March the 2nd at 9 a.m. or 9 p.m. Tell us where people can actually get tickets and where they can come out and uh, see the movie and talk to you guys and meet the rest of the cast. Tell us about some of your cast members in Simpson Road. I know oh, you got some great cast. Yes, um, I had by far the best cast members. I mean, I don't care. Hands down, we can do movies together all day. Ebony Williams, Toby, Terrence, Robert, um, uh, everybody, um, Little D, everybody. They were great. They were great. 
Um, I had the best time. And like I said, Simpson Road, just meeting those people, I felt like I was family. And we had known each other for forever. And that's the kind of, you know, that's the kind of people I want to work with. So, um, yes, I, I encourage everybody to come out to this movie. I mean, these are great people. They're going to be food. It'll be drinks. Um, you get to speak to us, take pictures, all that stuff. And it'll actually be at the uh, the Plaza Theater on Pont, um, Ponce de Leon in Atlanta. Um, it starts at nine and um, you can go to, you can go to actually my Facebook page and it's Dominique Hagler. So it's Facebook backslash Dominique Hagler. And you'll find um, that our tickets are on brownpaperbag.com. Um, mm-hmm. Let me, let me just verify that link, but I do believe it is on brownpaperbag.com and you can go and type in the search Simpson Road and it'll give you all the information you need as far as purchasing a ticket. Um, also, you can go to the link from my Instagram page, which is Ayo Dolly and that's A-Y-O-O-O underscore D-O-L-L-Y. You'll see a picture there and it'll also have the link where you can purchase those tickets for Simpson Road this Wednesday at 9. So now you're getting there. I know it's going to be a star-studded event, walking the red carpet and all that good stuff. How do you see yourself? Because, you know, if God is in this, and I know he is, and you become this mega star, how do you see yourself staying humble? Because some people, they start off really nice and humble. And then the next thing you know, people are calling them divas and they don't know how to act. They don't know how to talk to people. They don't know how to treat people. Do you see yourself remaining a humble spirit like you are right now, moving forward into your stardom? I do. I, I I believe in my heart that I will still be humble. However, um, I won't. I you know we can't be the same people that we are because yeah, money does change us and money changes the people around us. So even in that instance of me being humble, you know, I will have to put my foot down a little bit more than I do now. You know, I'm gonna have to have a little bit more attitude and a little bit more say so and I may have to say no and that just all comes with the territory you know I'm gonna have to break some hearts and you know I'm gonna have to you know it's it's certain things that come with that and you know being that I am a a nice person and you know things like that does it does it scare me a little but I'm like you know I know what I'm in for so it won't be a surprise you know what I mean it's gonna be people with their hands out and and I understand that. And, you know, I'm going to have to say no sometimes. But at the same time, you know, I'm going to remember where I came from and how I started. And, you know, whoever needs my support and my help, I'm going to back them, you know, as long as, you know, there is no funny business. So, you know, respect me and mine. I respect you and I'll help you. Well, I got to ask you this last question because I know and I wasn't going to kind of bring this up, but I am. You've been in the spotlight before because you are by last name in a pretty famous family per se and you know i know you know what it means to be kind of in that arena where people are kind of infringing on your space and kind of trying to get to you and and all that kind of stuff i know when you were growing up you said you didn't really care for it as much but now you're kind of in the industry yourself um following in the footsteps of your grandfather who have been in spot who has been in the spotlight for a very long time and is very very famous in his in his own right in his space um do you see yourself being able to handle that type of pressure and people all up in your face and paparazzi and all this kind of stuff? And I think I pretty much, I might've asked this before, but I know that when you were younger, that was an issue for you. Now you, you're a grown woman now. Um, are you ready for it on your own? Um, yeah, I'm ready to tackle that demon. And, and honestly, I've grown to the point where it's like people's always in my face, you know, and I'm regular now that, you know, I consider myself being regular. Um, yeah, it, the last name definitely comes with perks. And I still have people like, hey, you know, do you know this? You got this, you know, I, I do have that. And I go through that. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. It's fine. You know, be in my face. I like pictures. You know, great. You want to you want me to tell a story? Awesome. You know, you want to write me up in the newspaper? I'll take that too. Any publicity is good publicity in my mind. So, I mean, it is what it is at this point. You know, I'm, I've, like I've said, I've grown that skin. Before I didn't have that. And I was like, oh, you know, I kind of want my own. Don't want anybody in my space. Oh, don't look at me. Don't take no pictures. But now I'm like, hey, do what you got to do. Thanks. Yeah. Well, you, you come from a line of really strong people. Your grandmothers, your, 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 your dad, your mother, um, me. That's me, everybody. <laughs> 
I just I just kind of spilled the beans. Your grandfather, who you know, to be um, a professional uh, champion, if I must say, a professional champ, takes a lot of mental um, mental training as well as physical training. Do you think that being a part of such great group of people the, has that helped you be the woman you've become to be? Yeah, because at the end of the day, without that, you know, without without having that, I, I don't think I would be here. You know, most people don't talk about their past, but, you know, I, you know, I haven't stated everything from my past. And I'm like, you know, where I see where I am now, these I wouldn't trade these people in for anything, anything in the world. I wouldn't uh, because without them, I would you know, I would probably be doing a lot of things that I shouldn't be doing. So, you know, I'm I'm honored. I'm honored to have these people and these outlooks and being able to say, well, yeah, I am a part of that. And yeah, they are doing great things. So I feel like I'm already an accomplishment being that I was given the opportunity or born into this family or that family or whatever the case. So I'm, I'm really proud and I'm happy. And my goal is to keep on going, build that legacy for my kids and keep it going for there and push them and help them do whatever they want to do. I mean, that that's my plan. That's my lifetime goal. At the end of the day, that that's where I want to be at for me. Well, I want to thank you so much. And um, for those of you who don't know, because I don't think I mentioned it in the beginning, Dominique is my my daughter and um, she's my one and only. So I wanted to interview her. Please check out the film Simpson Road. Um, it's going to be premiering this Wednesday, March 2nd at the Plaza Theater in Atlanta, Georgia on Ponce de Leon um, Avenue, I think it is. Make sure you check it out. Come out, invite your friends. We have our tickets. We'll all be there to support Dominique, Toby, Terrence, the whole crew. Um, they're going to be there. They're going to be uh, talking to you guys. They're going to be signing um, autographs and all that good stuff. It's a, it's a great film, and, and that's what we're going to do. So I want to thank you for joining um, thank you for being a part of this. Um, and until next time, make it a great day.